Hi everybody and welcome to my first ever column for the Glasgow Girls Club online magazine. For a start, let me just quickly just describe this situation here. I have a toddler who is running an absolute riot. I hate doing videos in this room, but it's got the best lighting. Hate that lampshade. Hate that my beds are not made, but do you know something? My column is not about how to clean your house and how to housekeep. My column is about real life, about being a single parent, and that is basically what I want to talk to you about. And I've started very negatively for someone that's going to be speaking about being positive, but here we go. So let me really introduce myself. My name is Libby. I am 31. I am from Glasgow. I teach online, well now online, I teach online Zumba classes and I also teach a class called Zumbini, which is developed for children for ages zero to four years. And here is my mum bringing me an apparel spritz on a sun it's a Sunday, guys. Thanks, mum. Thanks You're very welcome. much. And people wonder why I still stay at home. Fabi do. Sorry guys, where was I? Oh yes, bring your child to my Zumbini class, help their development, and then in walks my mum with an apparel spritz for me. Awesome. This is a madhouse that I live in. Let me just fill you in in a bit of background. So, I was living abroad with my ex when I was pregnant, and I came back here to have my son. It was a short-term thing, obviously moving back in with my parents, that then became a long-term thing because my ex abandoned me in labour. Wasn't going to mention it, however, it is my first column, I'm introducing myself, I'm just giving you a bit of background info on me and who I am. And it leads to the next part of the story which I want to talk to you about today, which is survival. So yeah, that was pretty damn traumatic, right? So anyway short-term thing became a long-term thing and now everybody's like why are you not ready to like move out and I'm like hello I'll be here till Edson's 18. Anyway so let's go on with what we're meant to be doing here stick to the brief Libby. So when you have a baby you're obviously incredibly vulnerable and you have a thousand hormones rushing through your body you are not yourself you are literally just in shock then to go through that emotional trauma on top of that was really, really difficult. Like, honestly, that was a really difficult time. But now, two years on, I want to just tell you, I can look you all in the eye right now and say I am so glad that I went through what I went through because I would not be the person I am today if I didn't have to go through that growth. So let me explain to you a few things that I've really found helpful and you hopefully you can take some positive aspects from it um, and just hopefully maybe apply it to things and situations that you're going through right now also. So the biggest thing for me that I ever learned was that your brain and your body can become addicted to a toxic hormone. So for example, I could have been like, oh, I'm the victim and it was so easy to live in that negative emotion because god forbid i didn't feel anything but it was so easy to live in that negative emotion because it gave me such a rush of energy because my body was thriving off of these negative thoughts it's like when you see when somebody's in the wrong relationship and they leave them and they get their life together for a little bit and then they go back and you're like why are they going back they're addicted to that drama that toxic hormone it could be something so simple as you drive to work every morning and every morning there's traffic at half past eight and then on a Saturday you're sitting having your breakfast and all of a sudden you become anxious and you don't know why it's because your body is craving that feeling your body is craving that addictive feeling like they're addicted to that negative drama so then I started to think right if I could be addicted to a negative feeling why can I not be addicted to feeling good so anyway we'll come to that in a minute but anyway, you can become addicted to that toxic hormone. So then what happens is maybe for a week or two, you're in a mood. So, oh, what's wrong with you? I'm in a mood. You're in a mood. But then how long does a mood go on for before actually it changes you so much that then it becomes your personality? So I don't know about you, but I don't want to be known as the girl that's miserable or that's just her personality. So... A few things that I did to try and change that, obviously I spoke to family and friends, which are like, advice is always amazing. Um, I spoke to people who were maybe not related and not emotionally involved in situations, but I went on a lot of like podcasts and there's loads of stuff on YouTube and things like that. But something that I'm going to share with you is tips that I did daily that I feel can really just raise your spirits. Right, I'm going to mention that thing that everybody talks about and you'll be like, oh, I heard it all before. Here she goes. But self-care, honestly, if you cannot give yourself 30, 45, 60 minutes out your day, this is your day. 
and this is like an hour out of your day, if you cannot give yourself that time, you're not even going to be the best version of yourself for those people or those things that you're trying to take care of, yeah? You have to have self-care. I'm not being funny, but see when you go on holiday and you hear the safety briefing, nah, I used to be cabin crew for Emirates, but what does it say? Always apply your own oxygen mask first. There's something in that. I remember after I did, and this sounds so ridiculous, but I was like breastfeeding and I feel like I wasn't even myself and my body was not even mine. And my mum be like, go and put your makeup on. And I was like, I'm not putting my makeup on. She's like, put your makeup on. And you know what happened? Every day I would get up and then I would put on my makeup. It then became a routine. It then gave me structure to my day. And I actually was just like, my routine became, I put my makeup on in the morning, but I would listen to music. And then that made me feel happier as well. But it was routine and it was structure. And then I would be present in that moment. And then I felt like when I had my makeup on, I was like, okay, I'm ready to face the day now. And it's so vain. But he's just even something like putting your makeup on and feeling a bit glam. Guys, paint your nails. Put on a tune and dance about in your pants for 10 minutes just to reset your head and just get back in the zone for you. Self-care in the zone for you. Self-care, self-love. Now, obviously, being a Zumba instructor, I completely... I'm the biggest fan of the like the importance of exercise, not for the body, but for the brain. I have been teaching my classes throughout lockdown and the biggest thing that people give me feedback on is your class or any class, for example, is actually offering a sense of escapism. For that moment, it goes back to self-care as well. For that moment, you are not thinking about those negative thoughts. You are thinking about being present in that moment. You're switching off to anything that's going on outside, any external environments or emotions or anything that's bringing you down. You are in that moment. Especially speaking from a Zumba class, it is impossible to feel bad while you are dancing to good music. So get the good music on, get moving, join in in an exercise, class, an exercise class, go out a walk. Just literally get those happy hormones flowing through the brain again. Why don't you set goals? Why don't you write down intentions and set goals? The side effect of that will be excitement and happiness and joy. If you want to start a business, write what your business is. Write down the ideas, visualise having that little shop and how you decorate it. If I want to write something down, right, I want to go on holiday this year, COVID obviously dependent, I would be writing, right, I want to have the holiday here and I want the hotel to be like this and I want to have beautiful pina colada cocktails on the beach. It's hard to feel bad when you're writing about things that are possible in the future. So be clear, set clear intentions and have a creative process because you know something, they will be your goals to, for your future and there'll be goals to focus on, which obviously is a great thing as well, getting away from all that negative energy in the past and focusing on what's coming. You are always stronger than you think you are and you are a survivor and you can survive. <laughs>